Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss yet another mystery right here in the Milky Way galaxy. The mystery of unusual formations that seem to be only visible in the X-ray light, resembling these two large bubbles, or two large shock waves, possibly coming from the center of the galaxy, or possibly coming from somewhere else, much much closer to us, but essentially resembling some kind of a shock wave produced by a powerful event. And though discovered back in 2020, even today it's still not clear exactly what this is or what produced this. But these objects are usually referred to as Erosita bubbles, named after the X-ray telescope that discovered them approximately 5 years ago. And so let's discuss what the scientists have recently learned about these formations and what all of this tells us about various powerful activities in the Milky Way galaxy. But I guess first, a small clarification. These are not the same as the Fermi bubbles discovered by the Fermi telescope that are only visible in gamma rays. And Fermi bubbles appear to be much much larger, over 20,000 light years in length, and seem to produce very energetic light. And though the nature of these objects is also currently unknown, once the researchers discovered the Erosita bubbles, they actually wanted to find out if these two structures were somehow related. Although in short, even today, the true answer is unknown. At the moment, these two structures seem to be kind of independent. But when looking in the X-ray spectrum, which is something that Erosita was very good at, in 2020 researchers discovered that some of the oldest X-ray structures known to us, specifically the structure known as the NPS or North Polar Spur, the structure that we've known about for at least 40 years now, and the structure that was believed to be a remnant of some kind of a supernova a few hundred light years away from us, now was believed to be connected to a few other structures that were all discovered by Erosita between 2019 and 2020. And this turned out to be a really large circular structure, basically made out of really hot gas, that was actually occupying most of the southern sky. But when combined together, all of these individual structures seem to be actually kind of connected. But here there was one mystery. Was this actually showing us something in the center of the galaxy, kind of like what you see right here, visible from the galaxy known as M82? Or was this a result of some kind of a supernova-like event that was just basically in the same location, but much much closer to us? And in this case it was actually difficult to tell which of these explanations would be correct. And that's because these observations were in two dimensions. So for example, if this was some kind of a massive explosion much closer to us, which was the original explanation for the North Polar Spur and this other structure known as the Lotus Petal Cloud, visible in this image, this would imply some kind of a massive explosion, potentially some kind of a massive supernova, that just ended up covering the entire night skies in this super hot gas. But if these features were much farther away, it would imply that this is something even more powerful coming from the center of the galaxy, but maybe not as big as the Fermi bubbles, but most likely not as big as the Fermi bubbles visible in yellow. Although surprisingly, it would still be much more powerful, just because the total energy in Erosita bubbles seems to be actually much higher. And so here for about 5 years now, researchers try to solve this mystery by trying to find additional clues in various images. And depending on the explanation, it would basically present the Milky Way in a very different light. Either we have these very massive explosions right in the middle of the galaxy, where the black hole becomes super active producing huge emissions for thousands and thousands of years, or we get these really massive supernova we actually did not know existed. And to try to solve this mystery, the scientists behind the recent study decided to look at some of the dusty clouds measuring the distance to them and possibly seeing the signs of echoes from this powerful event. And one of the first discoveries was a series of unusual clouds up to 2000 light years away from us, whose shapes seem to match Erosita bubbles. But because these were basically the tips of the cloud, it implied that the bubbles themselves were much more distant than the clouds visible here. Here, these clouds were essentially displaying echoes or reflections that came from somewhere behind them and were now striking them, producing this extra light. And then by using additional objects, some nearby and some in front of these clouds, they were able to model this in three dimensions and then tracing the center for all of this to the approximate location of the central black hole. Which almost definitively proved that all of this was a result of a central black hole and not a massive supernova. Thus confirming the model that you can see right here. 
And it also obviously proved that a lot of those previous X-ray features we've known about for a long time seem to be much farther away and all seem to be kind of connected. Many of them basically being part of this bubble. Although interestingly, the southern bubble doesn't seem to have a very clearly defined border compared to the northern bubble. And nobody is certain why. Either way though, this definitively confirms that the central black hole Sagittarius A star potentially created massive emissions a few million years ago. But what's even more interesting is of course this additional study that just came out as well that possibly even discovers the source of all of this much much closer to the black hole. And this is from a separate study that was just released that used other data from the Chandra X-ray telescope in order to observe the center in more detail and in order to find out if there's actually a source of all of these X-ray explosions, if there's actually a source of all of these powerful emissions somewhere near the center. And surprisingly, they might have actually discovered the exact spot where a lot of this super hot gas seems to be created. And it's not right next to the black hole. Instead, it seems to be this unusual vent approximately 700 light years away from the central black hole, but that seems to be connected to the black hole with a very long tunnel-like formation of super hot gas. Here's one of the images of this unusual source that seems to form huge amounts of hot gas spewing from the black hole. And a lot of these actuaries produced here seem to be the result of very hot gas traveling away from the black hole inside this unusual tunnel and then colliding with much cooler gas in this location at extremely high velocities, which then creates massive shock waves, which potentially result in this. And so these unusual formations, these strange chimneys, might be responsible for producing both Erosita and Fermi bubbles, and are also responsible for many different outbursts that very likely happened in the past as well. And because these unusual vents seem to be located in an almost straight line from where the black hole is, it's quite likely that they are produced by the activity of the central black hole, although obviously in this case, the X-rays we're observing coming from here very likely came from the powerful emission over 200,000 years ago. And so right now, because we know the black hole is relatively quiet, this is essentially showing us a bit of a history. But one thing that nobody knows the answer to yet is whether this is all just one event or multiple events happening one after another for possibly thousands and even millions of years. And so in other words, are these massive expulsions a result of some kind of a one single gas cloud or a single outburst, or is this a bunch of smaller events that happened for a long time? Either way though, this definitively shows us that a lot of this super hot gas seems to travel inside of these galactic chimneys and then leaves through various vents, producing extremely powerful X-rays but also creating different shock waves, which can then form bubbles very similar to Erosita and Fermi bubbles. But despite of these exciting discoveries, there are still so many unanswered questions. And that means we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.